Hi, and welcome to Community Hotline at Home. I'm Monica Weitzel. Today we'll be featuring Don't Shoot Portland. Social justice issues have been at the forefront of the local and national conversation for months. And Don't Shoot Portland has been working here since 2014, advocating for accountability to create social change. Black-led and community-driven, this group is a community action plan involved in activism work. With us today is Ty Carpenter, president of Don't Shoot Portland. Ty, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks for coming. Hi, Monica. Thank you for accommodating the timing and just everything changing so much on a daily basis. I appreciate it. No problem. You've been very, very busy. <laughs> Your organization is pretty much in the news all the time, especially for anybody who might be following the protests in Portland. Um, maybe you could just give us a brief overview for those who don't understand exactly what it is you do or what your mission is. So Don't Shoot Portland is a community action plan, meaning that we work with community in order to um, build our resources, empower our mutual aid networks, and also make change happen. Um, civic participation is a big part of that as well. So we really try to implement programming that will not only educate, but activate kids and youth especially to get involved. How, how long ago did your organization start? Was it around two, 2014? Is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and okay. Professor Rayford was doing this work before um, it was officially established as a nonprofit. So that's why it's sort of like it's been a little longer than official Longer document. than that, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's work that uh, has, uh, there's a lot to be done. There's a lot to be done. Now, your organization, um, like I said, has been involved in a lot of the protests. Is that something that you're still continuing to do and still be involved in, or have you kind of moved away from that? Um, well, we've always been just inspiring people to be on the front lines while being able to watch out for their rights and protesting. Um, pretty much as long as people are going to be out there on the street, we're inspiring people to go out there and, you know, fight for your rights and educate each other and one another and protect each other. Um, and we're going to keep filing as many lawsuits as we need to. Um, we've had some prel preliminary injunctions that we've had to file based on the different tactics that were being ushered in. Um, it's just, it's constantly changing. So we're, we have like a, lead, um, a big team now of uh, collaborative lawyers working together yeah, to make good. sure that everything is covered. Well, it, it's a scary thing when people are out there, they want to protest, they want to protest peacefully, you know, in most cases, and then, and then ends up being tear gas or the rubber bullets or whatever, um, those less lethal weapons can be very, very damaging. And I know that you have something on your website that kind of goes into more depth about that. Um, the, tell me about that. One of the lawsuits surrounds that idea, right? About the, is that the one with the city of Portland? Yeah, um, basically it's all about riot control agents and how they're being used um, during a global respiratory pandemic. We've never seen this before. We've never seen something like COVID before. No. And the aggressiveness of the tactics, um, kettling people, and dousing them in the uh, tear gas, which, you know, people are starting to find out more about the chemical compounds of it. Um, the fact that it's actually a powder that becomes um, a gas, the fact that um, they're using expired CS gas as effects that we don't even know about. Um, so it's really scary and there's a lot of uncertainty. So that's why I think it's important that we um, are able to lead with science on this, you know, because people, even if you're not protesting, you're being affected. And yeah. I would I, I heard heard the um, police not very long ago, and I was had all of our windows open, and we could hear them saying, "We're going to be, you know, we're going to be using the tear gas." And it was close enough that I knew that it would come in our windows. Luckily, it didn't come to that. But you know, if you've got families and you know kids and, and, and you know anybody, any of us, we don't want to be around that. So it can be a very scary thing. So yeah, I think it's it, good to it, it it it's been shown to interrupt um, menstruation cycles. Um, yeah. You know, that's, that's biological it's, weaponry. It's very scary. It is a scary thing. So it's good to get educated, and then that's definitely not something we want to be involved in. Um, so, yeah, thank you for your work on that. Absolutely. And the riot control agents report I'm talking about that I'm referring to um, was, was, it was compiled by a team of um, health professionals, uh, black doctors, neuroscientists, um, mental health um, consultants, so there's a lot of great information there and um, it's available on our website. Good. Yeah, I've started reading it. I haven't finished it yet, but there it was. Yeah. Six pages. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. So, um, so you've talked to a lot of the people that have been affected by this, right? By, by the, 
those um, the chemicals and, and everything else that you know has been happening with the people that have been injured. What do you do with that information? Is that part of your lawsuit then? Yeah, so they go directly to our lawyers. Um, I end up seeing them as well before like we forward them all into spreadsheets and whatnot. Um, but it's just it's terrible. Every time I check one of our social media pages, I'm you know bombarded with messages of people being like, "Help me! They did this to me. I have a video of the police doing this to someone." And it's just it's horrible. You know, um, yeah. people are people are facing terror every day on the streets. I mean, it's we're almost 100 days of protest. You know, and oh. I don't think there's been a single day that there hasn't been. Um, violence yeah. being yeah. inflicted on protesters yeah and that's 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 really too bad that's really a sad thing um so when we're talking about the protests people you know go out to protest because they have a message they want you know get a message out that you know that black lives matter and that and that you know people have been treated unfairly that the police have been you know have um overstepped their authority and and, and are you know are, are killing people so some of those messages tend to get lost sometimes because other things that happen like like federal agents coming and and um how, how do you how do you keep people or help people to stay on message so those messages don't get lost yeah absolutely um i think that a lot of it is the media that decides to focus on different aspects so people um decide to be distracted by that but i really think that the messaging has not been lost especially when every day we have Unfortunately, we have um, new victims of gun violence emerging. It's constant, like it's it's almost unreal, you know. Yeah. So, but as yeah. far as staying on messaging, um, yeah, I think we've been doing a good job. Everyone that was here on the ground, they know it was never about the feds. Um, PPB was brutalizing people much, you know, way before federal agents came. And yeah, this has been going on for a very long time, but it's it's. Yeah. I finally, I feel like it's finally gotten to where other than, other than the black community, other people are finally, you know, taking notice and going, oh, wow, you know, I, I yeah. didn't realize it was so bad, you know, and I think that's a really good thing. Um, what else do you need to keep the, to keep the movement going? You know, how, how can we, how can we help? How can I as a white person or um, as any, anybody in the community help to, to keep this going? Do you, do you want more people protesting? Do you want, do you need more funding? Yeah, I think people need to keep showing up how they can and you don't need to go downtown just to protest. I mean, I've seen uh, one person on their street corner with their own sign, you know, um, and I think that's beautiful too. Just keep yeah. showing up how you can and for the people in your life, um, the local organizations that are available, um, donate to them, support them, see if they have any available call to actions. Um, we have a mutual aid spreadsheet. It's called Mutual Aid for Black Lives Matter. And there's daily phone numbers you can call. There's petitions that haven't met their goals yet. Um, there's medic groups you can support on the ground, um, ASL interpretation. There's so much that you can do. And if you know money is a way that you can support, then there's endless ways. Um, engage your mind, educate yourself, watch some films. There's so many different um, anti-racist uh, resources now out there, which is beautiful. Um, begin to understand policies and how they have, might not affect you, but they will affect people that you love and people that don't look like you. Um, become civically engaged. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. There, and there are a lot of resources. You really just have to look for them. It's not, it's There's not that hard. Wonderful resources that are just, you know, like Rolling Stone did an article on, you know, top 10 anti-racist resources. Like, I'm sure on Google, if you type in how to be an anti-racist, you'll find it's, it's more there. than yeah. just one book. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, that's right. So um, tell me just a little bit more about the mutual aid work that you do. What, what is it that you, that you actually do? So um, basically, we use our network to sort of do calls to action um, within the community. If there are fa uh, family members or communities that are in need, uh, we pretty much put a call out and... It's been beautiful. Um, we use our own space as a, a distribution space to our house okay. camps. Um, we're in contact with many people who will bring supply lists directly to us or other specific needs. Um, and then we just try to connect one another and empower each other and build it up because a lot of people don't know their neighbors and that's, that's a big, right. that's something that really needs to change in order to build 
more community care and less um, less policing and less fear and less um, feeling restricted to how we can help or how we can provide help, you know. I think that's a really good point. If you know your neighbors, you're less likely to call the police on them. You're less likely to you know, have an altercation with them. They always say like, you know, borrowing sugar or something. It's like no one goes to their neighbor's house to borrow sugar anymore. Uh, you know, when I moved into our neighborhood, a lady across the street brought fudge that she made for our family. I was like, wow, people still do that. That's so that's cool. Like, wow. Yeah, yeah. You know, instantly endeared me to her. So, yeah, those yeah, kinds of things, you know, they do, they do what they help. So yeah. if there's any one thing that you, well, I'm gonna, when I, before I get there, I want to say something about your, um, the Library of Congress. This is mm -hmm. something really exciting that I read was that the don't shoot Portland is, is going to be is archived for your anti-racist work. So that it's actually going to be in the Library of Congress. That's, that's yeah. a really exciting thing. It's amazing. Um, it's really cool. At first, when we got the email, we were just like kind of shocked that we even got that recognition because a lot of the work we do um, is made to be sustainable for the long term. We have a relationship with the community, with the city of archives here in Portland already. And a lot of our work and protest artwork has been put into their archives. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, that was just, it was like a really big highlight. We care so much about history and sustainability and educating ourselves and community-based archives. So that was like that's pretty cool. major. It's a nice little pat on the back. Yeah, you're doing good work. So yeah. that's great. And the, the history is so important because we, you know, obviously if you look back at Oregon's history, it's not really pleasant in, in, in this, uh, on this subject, so. Well, that's when we see not much has changed. It puts things yeah. into perspective. Instead yeah, of just imagining 100 years ago or way before, it's like, no, this was 40 years ago. This was yeah. 25 years ago. This was last week. Yeah. Like, yeah. You really have to put things into perspective by researching, and I think it helps a lot of people. I think it does, too. I think you've done a lot of good work. So what, what, is, uh, what is the one thing that you want people to, to take away from this conversation? What do, you, what do you think is most important they should think about? Just um, remembering to show up for one another and trying to become civically engaged because it's about more than just, you know, buying a Black Lives Matter sign or a Black Lives Matter shirt. Um, you really need to, you know, help your community become a part of the, your community. Undo what you've seen done to so many people. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ty. I really appreciate it. You, you're doing really good work there. And, um, and I just, uh, I hope that people will take this to heart. So thanks so much. Thank you so much. Thanks you're for very having welcome. me. You're welcome. And for all of you watching, please, um, from all of us at Metro East, stay healthy, stay safe, and please get out there and um, get involved with your community. Thank you.